All right, guys, we're looking at some tips and tricks for loading your piston. So you'll see when you get your pistons, if, especially if they're coated in fly cut, the emblem goes to the, the top. However, keep in mind on the six, seven power stroke, you've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, which is unlike the other engines that you're gonna build. Odds on one side, even on the other. If we look though at the piston, what you're gonna see is there's a weep hole way down in there. The weep hole actually will go to the top on the passenger side. On the driver side, it's just the opposite because you can't use it by cutaways for the piston. You can't look at that and, and determine the proper orientation for the piston because you have piston cool and jet cutaways on either side. Some pistons have offsets for the wrist pins and that's the reason for this because of the thrust side. But if you had surfaced the face of the piston and you did not have the orientation from the factory with arrows, you could actually look at the weep hole and that would tell you. Okay, now that we've got the rod and the piston mated correctly, uh, we'll show you a quick little tip on how to load this to make sure that you don't break the rings. So before we get ready to load these, we wanna make sure that we have the or proper orientation. Some of the rings are gonna have an M. If it's from Molly, some of them will have a dot. Uh, it just depends. Now you have some rings like these, like keystone rings, and then you have your intermediate ring here, you can actually see that one side is flat, the other side has actually got a taper on it. But for proper orientation, look for any indicator on top of the ring that would, would indicate that it would actually go to the top. So when we get ready to load this, what I like to do is just install it, just let it sit. We're gonna oil the outside, and we're also gonna locate these rings to make sure they're 120 degrees apart. You don't want the gaps lining up because if you do, that's a chance that the combustion gases leak through that area. It's important to note that the rings do rotate while they're running up and down. That's normal, but you don't want to start them out in their life already lined up because it can, it can lead to oil consumption issues or loss of compression. We've got that loaded. We've got our arrow pointing to the front of the engine and we're going to lubricate the top of the ring first. And it just helps make everything slide in a little bit easier. Once that's done, I'm going to show you, because this is probably the most common thing that guys are going to use to load. It's just super easy to break, really, really easy to break. If you're going to break a ring, you're typically going to always break the oil ring. It's the first to load. It doesn't take a lot. So you got to be really careful when you're doing this. It's always important that where this gap is, try not to, to put it where it would overlap the ring opening itself. So we've got... 0, 120, 360, I might put my gap over here like this so that I don't actually have a gap within this window area. I'm going to slide this over gently. And once it's located that way, I want to put it just to the top of my piston. There's a reason for that. I'm going to compress it with my hand first before I go cranking. So now that I've got this, I'm going to actually snug my ring compressor up a little bit. And with my left hand, I'm compressing it, making sure that everything is actually seated into the ring line. I like to put the throw of the journal down towards the bottom so that when it does go in, that it is a lot easier to line everything up. Now we've got other things that we use when we're assembling here, but I'm showing this for the DIY guy at home doing it. They might not have some of those tools. Make sure that your ring compressor is seated against the, the mating surface of your or your deck surface. So we're just going to bump that, make sure that's completely seated, and then we're going to hold it with the left hand in place and just tap it in gently. Don't go crazy with it. Rotate the engine over. You're going to want to guide the rod. If you're doing a lot of these, it really helps if you have some long plastic uh, rods that you can make that will guide over the top of the journals themselves. So we're gonna make sure that we seat that bearing. The best thing you can use is something plastic to seat that. Last thing is it's really important to, of course, use assembly lube when you're installing. I like 105 lubricator plate and there's reasons for it. Sometimes these engines won't get started up for a good long time. And if you use something uh, that is, uh, has a very thin viscosity, even engine oil, it tends to not stay in place. So we like to mark the rods. These are cracked caps, so it's important. These are like fingerprints and they have to make the exact same way. So we do, before we take these rods apart, just for the ease of assembly, 
we like to mark them that way we can see it. It makes it very, very simple for us. But it's important to make sure that the, uh, the rod is, is located and oriented in the right direction. Now, some crankshafts will have a fillet. This has a pressed fillet or a pressed radii. And so it's important to note the right orientation of the connecting rod. So if there's a chamfer on the rod, it needs to go towards typically the cheek. You'll see that there's not one on this, but we use the alignment because long side, cam side for the Ford. Now that's not on every engine, but for the 6.7 power stroke, it is. I hope this helps when installing the rings uh, and assembling on a 6.7 power stroke. Uh, a little bit confusing with the proper orientation. We get a lot of questions about that.